I swear, every volume of a certain magical index New Testament feels like an LSD trip, and the Coronzon arc is no exception. The first volume has so many epic and wild moments, such as Alistair, the 100 year old man turned lolly, dunking on Kanzaki and Night Leader at the same time, Toma being tortured in the Tower of London by a 14 year old chain smoker who's taller than Michael Jordan, and Orsola, the big titty nun, deciding she's going to be useful for once by becoming an Egyptian god of plants? And last but not least, Accelerator getting a contract with his own demon waifu who is absolute trash, literally. But what the hell is the context behind these events? We continue from the previous volume, where Alistair, the three heroes, and their allies decide to invade the land of tea and crumpets, because everyone hates us British people, and I don't know why. Ah oh yes, maybe they're just jealous. But before that, Alistair managed to seal the great demon Coronzon in Academy City, with her completely immobilized using the Banner of the West. But this spell will not last forever, as she will eventually be able to escape and get her revenge, as Coronzon is apparently using the body of Alistair's second daughter Lola as her avatar, and needs to find a way to free Lola from the demon's clutches. The plan is to find a corpse of Alistair's old nemesis Sam Mavis, who is buried in Westminster Abbey, and then destroy the body, which should free Lola, as Mavis was the guy who summoned Coronzon in order to bring ruin to Alistair before he died. Accelerator says a heartfelt goodbye to his lolly last order, as our squad travels travels to Egypt. And no, this is not Stardust Crusaders. The bisexual vampire has been replaced with the bisexual Satanist. Egypt is established as Team Alistair's headquarters and safe zone, as Mina is placed in charge of protecting Alistair's daughter Lilith, while others head to England to fight. They arrive at the English Channel, where they storm the Strait of Dover, supported by Crowley's Hazards, alternate versions of Alistair, which take a variety of different forms. Over 800,000 magical beams of light are fired their way, killing plenty of the Hazards, and causing the sea to turn red from the spilt blood. This certainly puts the D-Day landings to shame. The Hazards successfully storm the beach, with an octopus Crowley trying to enact their favorite tentacle hentai with an unfortunate female knight, who is rescued by her savior, Accelerator. But don't call him a hero, otherwise he's gonna have a fit. Ow, the edge. Alistair and the gang decide to waste no more time on the beach as they plan to head towards their main objective, London. Meanwhile, Hamazara and Takitsubo decide to ditch the group on a little English side quest, thinking now's the perfect time to go sightseeing now that a war's going on. Although they are joined by the magic gods Nyang Nyang and Top Nep, who snuck into a car with them completely ruining Hamman's plan to have a romantic holiday in England. Although let's face it, that's hard to come by anyway. Meanwhile, Alistair's gang floats over to London in a convenient hot air balloon, but they need to devise a method to break through London's final magical barrier to reach Westminster Abbey. And this barrier can't even be negated by Terma's right hand, Imagine Breaker. Therefore, Alistair comes up with a genius keikaku, or plan, if you don't speak Japanese. Let Terma get captured by the Anglicans so they let him into the barrier, and then hope Terma finds a way to bring it down from the inside. Truly foolproof. Terma gets taken into the Tower of London and thrown into a cell, but he hears a familiar voice, that of Orsola Aquinas, a nun who defected to the Anglican Church after she was saved by Terma. Knowing that the Tower of London is synonymous with torture, Terma can't bring himself to believe that the kind-hearted Orsola would be the one to inflict unimaginable pain upon him. <laughs> I'm in danger. Of course, that doesn't happen. Instead, he is interrogated by his former ally, Style Magnus, who might have a small vendetta against Terma because Terma stole his girl. He then goes into panic mode, knowing this guy can create 3000 degree Celsius flames. Terma was strapped into a chair, and Style uses a paper voodoo doll to torture him, giving Terma the sensation and illusion of his leg burning and falling off like a chicken drumstick. Style then left the room to find an even nastier tool to conduct the torture with, to which Offenus then made a surprise appearance, managing to enter the tower thanks to her 15 centimeter stature. She notes that Terma may have a higher resistance to pain due to the endless hells she exposed him to at one point in time. See this video for context. 
Offerness helps terminate Prison Break and destroys the source of the barrier from the inside. Meanwhile, Alistair and Accelerator begin some dysfunctional father-son-like bonding, except shouldn't it be mother now that Alistair is a lolly? And wait, isn't Accelerator's gender not even confirmed? What the hell is going on? They also head past the destroyed barrier and get confronted by Kanzaki Kari, a powerful magician and one of only 20 saints in the world. And Night Leader. Hmm, I wonder what his job is. Night Leader. Ah yes, he's Kanzaki's sip. They try to take on Alistair, but she says, is that all? as they are completely unable to harm her, as Alistair was pretty much the one who created the foundation of what all modern western magic is based on, Fog Life. The Fodder Night goons, meanwhile, think they can actually take on Accelerator, and that goes as well as you'd expect. But all of a sudden, London turns into ancient Egypt? Okay, okay, I know the British Museum might as well be called the Egyptian Museum, but this is taking the piss. This change of scenery is part of Karonzon's anti-Crowley defences, which Karonzon had assembled prior, as any magic which uses theories before 1904, the year Alistair released the sweetest ass mixtape, I mean magical work kit, as the obelisk that emerges fires a beam of light which tears through the Crowley hazards, with it using the power of Ra Zeus. As when the Macedonian Greeks invaded Egypt, they linked their gods to the Egyptian ones, which is why it has two gods in its name from different mythologies. Alistair defeats Night Leader and takes out the stone pillar by snapping it in half and throws it at a giant crocodile under the name of Osiris Hades right through its gaping mouth. Alistair was actually physically amped during this time due to her blood sacrifice. Essentially, the more Crowley hazards that are killed, the stronger and faster she becomes. Alistair then uses the blood sacrifice on Kanzaki to expose the fact she was being possessed by a demon known as Clipper Puzzle 545, who was created specifically to try and kill Alistair. Yep, the trash demon is here with her old newspaper drip dress. She is also attached to a metaphysical concept known as the Tree of Evil, which ranks all the demonic beings in the Index Verse, with some exceptions. Clip uses her ability to possess the knights, using countless needles to control their bodies like puppets. She also attempts to control Alistair, who's like, lol no, and blows her away. But that won't be the last time we see her, of course. And don't forget, I'm making a super special Toma video at 20k subs. K, okay, thanks, bye. Alistair and Accelerator resume their bonding as a random ass old British man is like, you're right, mate, looking a bit pale and skiddy. You fancy popping in for a brew? To which Accelerator denies. Alistair asks, why didn't you accept the offer? Just because you're the feared number one esper in Academy City doesn't mean you could potentially live a normal life elsewhere. Well, maybe not in London, but you get the point. To which Accelerator asks, well, what about you, Alistair? To which Alistair responds, I hate this country and they hate me. Take me back to the land of the weebs where I belong. Orsola notices her nun friends getting involved in the fight against Alistair and thinks, God damn, I feel more useless than Sakura. No more being the kind-hearted big titty Onesan nun. She takes a spiritual item known as a divine mixture, which turns her into Isis Demeter. And no, I'm not talking about the terrorist organization. Also, that outfit is quite the change from that conservative nun habit. God damn. She confronts Alistair's gang with multiple giant Venus flytraps and other plants, while Accelerator kicked a racist fat knight so hard, he went from Nelson's column right into Big Ben. I mean, that's based as fuck. But seriously, Accelerator, you better be paying those vandalism charges after this is all over. Toma discovers Alistair got KO'd by Orsola. That's a bit embarrassing, but whatever. Then manages to confront her directly and realizes her perception has been altered by the divine mixture, making her not quite the same person as the kind-hearted nun he's familiar with. As Terma goes into talk no jitsu mode, explaining to Osola that Alistair wants to save his, I mean her, daughter, and isn't trying to take over England, he also reveals the true identity of Archbishop Laura Stewart being Karonzon. And that while Alistair was one of the biggest degens in modern human history, his life saw unbelievable tragedy, with some of it being inflicted upon him by the actions of others, which likely spurred him 
onto the path to evil. As Orsola is like, nah, Toma, you literally saved the guy who started the world war previously. Alistair is also a bad person who must be stopped. While the old newspapers portrayed him as the worst person in the world, his or her actions in the present proves that this old man turned lolly is a piece of shit. Offenus listening in intervenes with a truth bomb. The hazards haven't actually killed anyone. Alistair just ordered them to cause chaos and die without actually trying to murder those in their way, as both a distraction and to power Alistair's main body. Toma reminds Orsola that she saves people with a much more noble way than him. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Because Toma has a reputation for punching anyone in the face. Man, woman, adult, child, he has no filter. While Orsola is just a Christian cinnamon roll. She then realizes her mistake, even if she took the divine mixture to be proactive for once and protect her friends and home. As the divine mixture breaks, returning her to normal. Meanwhile, Accelerator meets up with a defeated clip and says, Hey, you want to sign a contract? And like a Japanese maid in a Tokyo cafe, Clip says, Yes, be my master, Accelerator. Like every other Accelerator fangirl put into this situation. Okay, I'm exaggerating a bit, but the point is that Accelerator will safeguard Clip in return for her teaching him all about magic. Terma, Accelerator, and Alistair then reunite at Westminster Abbey, to which they find the grave of Mavers. However, that's not his skeleton! How Alistair recognises even her arch enemy's bones aren't a genuine article proves how petty she is. But suddenly, Mavers and Alistair's former cabal, the Golden Dawn, make a surprise appearance. But how is this possible? Alistair killed them! which you would know if you watch my New Testament 18 summary. Well, Coranzon created magical grimoire versions of them. So yep, they are walking, talking fakes made of magical books, which have the same personalities as the originals. Alistair quakes in fear as she cannot believe her eyes, despite how strong she may be. In this moment, she cannot hide her vulnerability. But despite everything that Alistair has done to the both of them in the past, Toma and Accelerator team up as the weakest and strongest ranked espers declared war and shouted in unison. Alistair is not alone. The fruits of her labours are right here. As New Testament 20 ends. Stay tuned to the channel for when I upload the sequel summary to this volume as Alistair and Mavis throw hands. And if you missed my previous index volume summaries and you enjoyed this one, you can check out my old ones right here. Thanks very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.